Welcome to Triangle B&I. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech. We talk all the time about how loud and crowded the social media world is. You need some professionals on your side to get your word out to your current clients and future clients. So go to oakcitytech.com. Tell them what you're looking for. I know they'll be able to help you. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning. Each week on Triangle B&I, we bring you a local small business success story. If you are not familiar with B&I, it is Business Networking International, the world's largest networking organization. Our little slice of heaven here in the Triangle is Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. Each week, about 30 chapters, almost 600 members get together to do nothing but help each other grow our business. And our featured successful small business owner this week, is Madison Brown with New Creation Photography. Madison, how are you today? Thank you. Now, you are a crossover guest today, just so everybody knows. Madison is a member, is in Fayetteville, and he is a member of Hall of Famers, and that's F-A-Y-M-E-R-S. They meet Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. at Crossroads Church, but right now they're still Zoom. But Madison is in Fayetteville, which is part of Coastal BNI. But he's also a consulting director here with me and just a swell egg. So we thought we'd have him on just to entertain everybody for about an hour. So uh, everything good yeah. with you, Madison? I know you're saying you guys had a good uh, Mother's Day weekend. Yes, everything is fine. Um, we had uh, two out of the three daughters, and then the other daughter, she was on the phone with her a long time, and uh, we kind of took a two day. Saturday and Sunday celebration. So last night, Pandora was uh, was was tired. There you go. As, as was I. As was I. I'm not as young as you, Mike. I'm <laughs> as young as you, so. <laughs> and uh, Madison and I share a couple things in common. One is baseball. One is grandkids, which we'll most certainly get to talking about grandkids. But I want to talk a little bit about photography here and what you do, and just some tips for some folks, because you do re- you're mostly real estate photography. You also shoot uh, little league shots, team photos and uh, headshots and everything like that. Uh, a lot of us think we're photographers. What do we need to know <laughs> to be a good photographer? Well, I um, to be a professional photographer, they told me in the beginning that the only thing you needed to do was to get paid. <laughs> uh, now, you ask, what do you need to do to be a good photographer. Uh, and, and there are a couple things. You can uh, take photography classes, as I did. Um, you can also have a mentor, someone that you shoot under, and that they can uh, not only talk to you and teach you about photography itself, but they can also you know, teach you the business of photography, because as in any business of this type, you have to in order to be really successful, you have to know how to, you have to know the craft, and then you have to know the business side of it. So I would say, go ahead, uh, take some classes at your local uh, community college or, or what have you, and and then get under somebody that can show you and teach you exactly how to do it and do it right. The real estate world in the triangle, it's ridiculous. They, houses are moving. Uh, it's, we've heard stories of buyers, you know, looking at five or six houses before they could actually get one that they wanted. Why do we need good pictures today? If every house moves with barely a visit from a potential buyer. And just to to let you know, I do shoot in the uh, triangle market. Uh, the last one I shot a couple of weeks ago, the house went, um, $30,000 $30,000 over asking, and it was asking, the asking was $200,000. And as soon as the pictures got out there, I would say the, the one reason that you still need professional photography is best business practice for the realtor. Because when things are going so fast as they are now, and they're going fast in Fayetteville also, uh, a, a realtor can get into the, well, I don't need to have professional photography. I can just get that front shot, that back shot. I can tell my buddies and they're all gonna wanna uh, uh, have, they have buyers for it already. So I don't need to do this. Well, guess what, Mike? Everything is kind of like a buyer rhythm. It's gonna go up and down and up and down and it's gonna shift at some time. And if you don't maintain best business practices, 
you would be one of those that's going to be in trouble when things start to shift. So th that is my advice to realtors. Just And that's anybody in business. Maintain those best business practices, whether your industry is going great, your industry is struggling, or there are challenges. It doesn't matter because it's your brand. And that's what you are uh, promoting, your brand. When people look out there and it's, it's a realtor has those uh, it's a, on the MLS or wherever else it is, that's them. That's their brand. And they cannot, um, they should not, they should not take away from their brand by being careless just because times are good and homes are selling. Oh, that's great advice just in general. What are the three or four key shots from a house that you want to post on the website? Well, the money shot, that's what they call it. Uh, the money shot is that front. That's the money shot. So that's the one, that's the first one that people are going to see. And that's the one that you want to have uh, perfect. So you want the sky to be perfect. Uh, you want the lighting, everything to be perfect for that one shot. The other uh, shots on the inside that the buyers are looking at, they look at the kitchen. And now, of course, everybody wants that open uh, architecture. So they want that the kitchen and the family room, uh, dining area, all to be an open area. So they're looking at the kitchen because there they can see the appliances and, and everything else and how everything is set up. Uh, the third uh, area that they look at is going to be the master bedroom. So they want to see how the master bedroom's laid out. They want to see how the master bath is is laid out. So you really want to make sure that you get that money shot, that 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 front of the house. You want to make sure you get that. And then uh, after that, you want to make sure you get all of the kitchen shots and, and that area. And then of course the master bedroom. That's the other the other place that uh, uh, third place that people look. And I think on the interior shots, we could probably set up the rooms pretty, I, I think we all have an idea of what goes into that. But as far as the exterior shot of the front of the house you're talking about, what are some things to have in the photo and some things not to have in a photo? Well, you don't want a car pulled into the driveway. Um, and uh, I've seen, I, I don't take them like that, but I've seen pictures where there's a car uh, in the driveway for whatever reason. Uh, you Obviously, you want the, the lawn to be manicured, so um, you, you want the grass to be cut, and not just cut, but you want the shrub, shrubbery to be uh, to cut and be manicured. You want that curve appeal, because I, I tell people, uh, my realtors, my, my clients, that um, you have to take care of the, the on-site curve appeal, and I'll take care of the online curve appeal. So as long as you take care of that part, I will make sure that everything else uh, looks good uh, when the when the uh, potential buyers go out and look at the property. But uh, the the biggest thing is the the, the manicure. You you want to make sure that that day the lawn has been freshly uh, mowed and the shrubs have been freshly uh, trimmed. Are you a drone pilot yet? No, no. And the, the reason that I am not is that uh, I have BNI. <laughs> I have BNI uh, folks that that do do that. And um, uh, one uh, it was BNI here, and now she's uh, in the Durham chapter, and she does the drone. And we have another one former BNI member that does the drone. So any drone work, I would refer to BNI. It's just that simple. So that's something that that I have not. Uh, done because I have BNI associates that I can refer that business to. Oh, come on. You want a toy to play with Madison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all like toys. You know, I'm a tech, <laughs> I'm a techie guy, but uh, I said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll let them have, have that. And that's okay. I'm not, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. I okay, always as as I yeah. can, uh, give it to a BNI person. There you go. I always enjoy spending other people's money so tell tell the listeners here why they should not take their own pictures of their own house. <laughs> so this, if I were giving my ten minute presentation um, in uh, B and I, I would have some uh, images to show you. <laughs> but let me see if I can uh, describe to you why not. First of all, 
uh, they're not going to be using a wide angle lens. So they're just going to be getting a small portion of the room. So the room is going to look small. Um, even with the the cell phone, now, everybody is a, a cell phone professional these days. And uh, we took cell phone pictures this weekend for Mother's Day. I have no problems with uh, uh, with my um, with my cell phone. But when you're talking about something that's going to cost somebody thousands of dollars, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars and a million dollars, you don't want to be out there taking pictures with your cell phone because those pictures can be dark. And uh, normally the people out there doing that don't have the software and the knowledge of how to use the software to enhance the image if they need to be enhanced. Um, you're not going to get the right angles because unless you've been trained in real estate photography, there are certain angles, there are certain things that you, that you don't do, okay? And there are certain uh, shots and angles that are important and make the room look good. For example, I'm tall, so I can't take a picture at my height. People always ask me, why are you stooping? Why are you stooping? Well, I'm stooping because pictures should be when somebody looks at a, uh, an image of a house interior, it should be at the average, the height of the average person. It shouldn't be me looking down on it. So there are just different things that unless you have been trained how to do this, you won't know. And you'll just be out there taking pictures and going, hey, houses are selling fast. I'm good. No, you're not good <laughs> because something's going to change and now you're going to have problems. So, yeah, I'm with you on the cell phones. I just got a brain, you know, I've heard this before. I just got a brand new phone. It's got a great camera, but still it's not up to par with even an average camera you would have. Right. I know. I, I've got a Google pixel five. I love it. Love it. And it takes great pictures, but I would not go out <laughs> and shoot uh, real estate with that phone. No. Who gave you your first camera and when was it? My father Actually, uh, my father took a lot of pictures. I actually have his camera, and if I'd known you were going to ask this question, it, it'll take me about uh, 10 seconds to get it because I have it here in my home office. But I have the camera that he used. It was one of those that you uh, you open at the top and you look down in, and, uh, and you take the picture, and then you wound it up for the, the next picture. So there was something on the side that you wound up to get to the, uh, the next frame. And uh, he bought my brother and I cameras when we were probably, I don't know, seven. And we he and I took pictures. We took pictures with our cameras and still have the camera, as a matter of fact. And uh, over the years, my brother was actually the one that everybody thought and was gonna be the photographer because he was taking more pictures than me and it just kind of changed over time but uh yeah my father took a lot of pictures and uh um he, he bought us the first our first cameras and it just continued to snowball from there how much film did you and your brother go through those first couple of years once your dad gave you a camera okay so uh now are you talking about the <laughs> the, the film where we actually tried to develop our own pictures <laughs> in the we had an extra bedroom so um we, uh, you know, we, we were kind of, I don't want to say we were geeky, but you know, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So we had an extra bedroom. So we decided that at night we were going to close the blinds and then make the room really dark. And we were going to develop our own pictures. And we had this, I think you could buy this, uh, uh, the, you know, all the chemicals and develop your own pictures. So we decided that we were going to do that. So how much film did we waste that way? <laughs> uh, we, we probably burned through quite a bit trying to develop our own pictures. But, uh, but uh, uh, otherwise, yeah, we, we used a, a lot of film because we took a lot of pictures. So, yeah. yeah we, but it was a lot, of fun, a lot of fun. We were never successful at developing our own pictures, by the way. Just, I just need to say that. We are here with Madison Brown, owner of New Creation Photography. He's a real estate and little league photographer based out of Fayetteville, but he works in the Triangle area a lot. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech, and Madison would be someone you would hire to take pictures for your brand new website. And Oak City Tech folks can help you with that. They can also help you with the content of that website. So when Madison takes great pictures, they can write wonderful stories about that but you need professionals like that out in the social media world. 
Uh, everybody's on social media. Everybody's on the internet. So you want to make sure you have a wonderful presence there. And the folks at Oak City Tech can help you. Go to oakcitytech.com. Tell them what you're looking for. I know they'll be able to help you. All right, Madison, you have a varied background. You've got uh, 12 years or so at IBM. You've got mm -hmm. about 18 years in the Army. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you make the shift from that to being a photographer? <laughs> well, I, I make the shift because I always wanted to own my own business, and this is from uh, a small child. So um, the reason I got in the Army, uh, I was in college, and it was my freshman year, and the uh, that was back in the day where they had the lottery. So uh was sitting in the dorm room watching them draw the numbers and march the 6th was number one well my birthday is march the 7th so i figured the odds right you're never going to get it's going to be at least 100 or 200. well march the 7th came up number two so um i toyed with the idea of getting drafted or going into rotc i chose rotc and um that started the military career and then uh, after that, I, I still wanted to have own my own business. So I did uh, computer portraits for, uh, for a while. And uh, also I had some other, <laughs> other interesting uh, professions, but then IBM uh, came along. And of course, uh, I love computers and went with them, stayed up there until for 12 years and uh, still, had the desire to own my own business. That that was one desire that never left me. And so when our youngest daughter graduated vet school from NC State, my wife and I said, well, this is a time that we can do what we want to do because we won't have anybody in our pocket. So um, <laughs> we started uh, New Creation Photography while I was still at IBM. She was still at the post office. We did mostly weddings and uh, family reunions at the time because back in 2007, uh, 2006, 2007, that's what was very, very popular. And um, so it wasn't difficult to transition into owning my own business because that's what I always wanted to do. And it really wasn't difficult to transition into photography because I was already doing it. Uh, wherever we lived, I was always the kind of the unofficial official photographer. So those two things were always with me. I assume that you are always getting calls from family and friends. Hey, Madison, would you mind coming over and shooting fill in the blank event, right? Well, well um, family lives a little distance, but the, the <laughs> last project that I worked on for family, I'm also the family historian. So all of the old photographs, old pictures, all of the old anything, as people have gone on, uh, I have. So uh, I recently, uh, a few months ago, put together a project for my cousin for her 70th birthday. Her daughter had asked uh, about it because she knew I had all the pictures. So we put I put together a nice presentation of pictures from our uh, my grandparents, uh, which were her great grandparents, and and just people all all through the ages and uh, images and pictures that none of them had. So that uh being able to do that for family uh makes me feel real good so uh, uh i've done some weddings for family uh i would say i would say be careful what you're doing things for family that's all i'll say as family historian i don't think most families have someone designated officially for that how many how many places did you have to look or or family members to call to get all those photographs and other information that you need Okay, several places. I had uh, two second cousins, my father's first cousin. One lived to be 101, uh, just shy of 102, and the other one lived to be uh, 97, just shy of 98. So I would go to their house in Maryland, and I would uh, write on napkins anything that I could, uh, anything that I could find to write on, and I would just sit under them, ask them questions, and, and write down what they said. Uh, my grandmother in Alabama, uh, when we went down there in the summer, I would always spend a lot of time with her, and she would tell me a lot of stories that, unfortunately, I wasn't writing down. But, you know, over the years, I did remember uh, some of the stories. And uh, I had been to graveyards and written down uh, the family members that were in graveyards. 
Uh, I have been to the courthouse, uh, and that was in Alabama. I've been to the courthouse in Maryland, and I have uh, researched uh, books that they had, handwritten books that they had there. And uh, so, of course, we've gone on the uh, uh, family ancestry uh, site. And so just a lot of things and talking to people and trying to and kicking myself because I didn't talk to some of these people when they were still around. But uh, there, it, it's some it's some work involved. But when you start to put things together and things come together, it's very, very rewarding, very rewarding. How many family members told you a story with the caveat of, but you can't tell anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, none really. I mean, when my grandmother was telling stories, uh, when we go down to Tuskegee, Alabama, and she would tell me stories, uh, I would probably think that some of those stories my mother probably didn't want her to tell, <laughs> but it, it's okay. And and, and her, my mother's brothers probably didn't want her to tell me, but uh it was okay. I'm glad she did because, you know, I, I know some things and, and, but, uh, no, no, they, uh, uh, when my father got uh, older and he, he had dementia, he started to tell me some stories and I'm thinking, okay, I really don't need to hear that. Please don't tell me that you're my father. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Nothing's better than grandma's telling stories. Yeah. <laughs> Those are so good because they go into great detail and you're, like you said earlier, they remember way more than we want them to. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many generations of your family can you go back to? I can go back to uh, my grandparents' parents. So that would be my great-grandparents. That's about as far as I can really go back, um, which actually takes me back to the mid-1800s. Wow. So, where did they live? That's, that's the best I can do. Where did they live? Mm. Um, Maryland and Alabama. My father was from Maryland and my mother was from Alabama. So a uh, combination of, of those two states. And uh, yeah, so it was, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to, to actually go in and, and research and try to find out as, as much as you can. And I have, uh, some I have pictures. I, I did, uh, I do re photo reconstruct, uh, restoration, and I did restore a picture of my father's uh, grandmother, uh, his mother's mother. So uh, I have that, and that's that's a good one to have. So uh, not a lot, a lot of pictures from that era, but uh, I do have a few. How difficult is that to do, Madison? Um, photo restoration is something I picked up as part of wanting to know more about Photoshop and how to do things in Photoshop. And as I, um, and part of it is when in photography, you do have to enhance some of the pictures uh, that you take. So I just wanted to be able to learn how to, to learn the program. And then in doing so, what I found out is that I could actually uh, be a service to somebody who has old photographs. I've got one that's coming in today of uh, uh, a lady came to me and she had a, a brother and a brother's deceased now, but they're pictures of her brother when, when he was younger. And I've got another one uh, the same way that I'm working on. So uh, what I found is that it just gives me great joy to take something that's almost destroyed and bring it back to life and just, just see the the joy on people's faces when I give it back to them. So uh, that that's something we do, and and we do it uh, not so much for money, but we do it because it just makes people feel good, and that makes me feel good. Did any of your three daughters pick up your eye for photography? Um, I would say two of them can, but not. They they went in other directions. Uh, the oldest daughter is uh, she graduated UNCG with uh, Greensboro with a um, deaf education degree, and she she went into teaching. And then um, my middle daughter, uh, she's a pediatric RN. She lives in Georgia now. And the youngest uh, daughter, her said she uh, got her vet degree from NC State, so she's a vet. So they went into different directions, and that's okay. That's okay. Were you I'm a good, oh, I bet. Yeah. Were you a good substitute <laughs> teacher back in the day? 
I was. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I'd gotten out of the Army in El Paso, and uh, that was one of the things that, uh, that I did. I went in, uh, Pandora was teaching full-time, and so I said, well, I can substitute. And then they asked me to take an, a um, seventh-grade English class full-time uh, and for a whole semester. So uh, I did that, and I I had a great time. Matter of fact, I had toyed with the idea of going ahead and taking the the extra courses, education courses, and and the two of us staying there and being teachers. And then the, the army came along, and I found out that uh, as a captain going back in the army, I could make three times more than I could make teaching in El Paso, Texas. So there wasn't much of a wasn't much of a decision to be made there. So yeah. <laughs> what what was your rank in the army? Uh, when uh, when I got out, I was a mate. So I went in as a second lieutenant back in the day, and then uh, 1993 is when I uh, finally got out. Took an early out. What was your specialty? I was I uh, went in as an air defense officer, and then when uh, uh, probably in the the late probably about 87. I transit, transitioned over to civil affairs when uh, I was stationed in Minnesota. So air defense and civil affairs were the two specialties. How cold were those Minnesota winters? Uh, everything you hear, just take it down a few degrees and uh, <laughs> you got it. It was, uh, now you have to understand, we came from El Paso, Texas <laughs> to Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities. So we were coming from, you know, 90, 80, 90, 100 degree weather. And now, you know, we're going to sub-zero weather. Uh, and I remember when I was looking for a house, I went up first and the realtor was taking me around. And he said, well, that's the snow lift up there. That's the ski. That's where they, they ski. And uh, it'll be operational here in another uh, few weeks. And this is, uh, well, in November, and, and this is October. And I'm looking, and I'm saying, so if there's going to be snow up there, what's it going to be here? And, of course, obviously snow. But uh, the lakes would freeze over. I tell anybody, I have walked on water. I have walked <laughs> on water many times. Well, because I walked on the lakes when they were frozen. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of stories about uh, uh, Minnesota and how cold it was, uh, or it is. But uh, we enjoyed it. And, and we enjoyed it. We stayed there seven years, so we enjoyed it. I just have pictures of you moose hunting and ice fishing. <laughs> well, the one thing that I really wanted to do and I never got an opportunity to do was go ice fishing because uh, that was really a, a big thing around there. And, you know, life just kind of takes over and you're doing what you do and you have this thing in your mind, before I leave here, I want to do this, I want to do that. And ice fishing was probably the one thing that I wanted to do that I didn't get to do because you would see them out there in their little houses and, you know, uh, sitting on the water with their, yeah, ice fishing. But, uh, yeah. Now that's a restored photo I'd love to see. (laughs) (laughs) During all your tours, you had a stop in Germany. Did you enjoy living over there? We did. That was our very first stop. After I finished uh, school at Fort Bliss in El Paso, we went to Germany and uh, stayed over there three and a half years. And uh, two of our daughters were born uh, in Germany, so I guess they have dual citizenship. But uh, Germany was, uh, I was in air defense, so I spent a lot of time in the field. And it was cold over there in the field. It seemed like they only wanted to have exercises when it was cold. (laughs) <laughs> and um, I said, okay, that's, uh, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. They said because they do less maneuver damage with the track vehicles, and that's why, they, that's why you want to go out when the ground is frozen. So that, actually, that did make sense. But, uh, you know, going out in the cold was not uh, a favorite thing. But, yes, we have, we have friends that we still have from Germany, our oldest daughter's godparents we met in Germany. So uh, it was uh, – it was. It, 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 you make things, you make a place, you make the place. The, the place doesn't make it. And that's always been our attitude. Uh, we went on, uh, we went all over Europe on different tours 
and everything. So we enjoyed uh, our time in Germany, our three and a half years there. We enjoyed it. My father-in-law is a retired Air Force colonel, and my wife graduated high school in Heidelberg, and her sister okay. was born in Japan. And they, like you, they love the military. And you're right. They took full advantage of everything to do. And my wife skied in the Alps, swam in the Dead Sea. They traveled all over the place, and they loved mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to do that. Like I said, you you make the place. You asked me about Minnesota. But you, you make it what you want it to be. You don't let it make you. And uh, um, so that's been our attitude wherever we've gone. And uh, same thing here in Fayetteville, although maybe it's been a little bit more difficult for me. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Halfway. <laughs> <laughs> we are here with Madison Brown, owner of New Creation Photography. Madison's a member of the BNI Chapter Hall of Famers in Fayetteville. They meet Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. So if you want to hang out with a good group of small business owners, uh, you can get in touch with uh, Madison on the on his phone number here on the screen. We've been putting up throughout the show and get the Zoom link and come visit. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech. Uh, folks, one of the things you should not forget about is an email list because Facebook can kick you off of Facebook. Uh, other sites can just knock you off. They can go out of business, take all your content, all your contacts, but you can you own your email list. So get with the folks at Oak City Tech about how to put that together and then what to send out so you can keep in touch with your clients. Go to oakcitytech.com. Tell them what you're looking for. Tell Drago we said hi. All right, Madison, always have uh, on the show folks that are married have two questions for them. So you and your wife, okay. Pan Pandora, uh, how did you meet and do you both tell the story the same way? Okay. Um, I was telling her the story the other day and she said, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so um, we were in college, our sophomore year in college, and I was back uh, early. We went to Hampton uh, University, and I was back early for band camp. I was in the band, and a friend of mine said that he was meeting his girlfriend, and I knew his girlfriend, uh, because she was also in the band at the grill, which was like the, the campus uh, hangout. So I said, he wanted to know, you want to walk down with me? I said, okay. So we walked down, and so I go in, and his girlfriend, Cynthia, is sitting there with Pandora. And I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm, I'm done. Uh, she's the one. I'm in love. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's crazy. That's cool. I'm not going to argue with anybody over how they think I felt or didn't feel at the time, because that was back in 1972 and we're still together. But um, anyway, so uh, now the, the, the problem was, the challenge was, I had to convince her of how I felt. And <laughs> so that she could feel the same way about me. So um, my roommate at the time was a senior and he was in ROTC and he said he was thinking about asking her out. Well, I said to myself, this can never happen. So I asked her out and the first movie, the first date, our first date was to go to see the movie, The Man. That was with James Earl Jones and uh, he was the first black president. Now this is back in 72. So uh, the president, the vice president, and the speaker of the house had all died in some tragic accident, and he was the president pro temp. So uh, if you ask me anything else about the movie, I can honestly say I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to go back and watch it again today. But that was the that was our first date, and uh, that was back in August, September, nineteen seventy two, and we've been together ever since. Now and she knows that that's the story. Okay. Now, when I do talk to Pandora eventually, and I would ask her when you were sitting there and this strapping young fellow, uh, six foot two, six foot four, all chiseled and everything walks in, what was your first thought? And what would she tell me? She would tell you that she was not looking for anybody. <laughs> she would tell you that, uh, um, she was very, comfortable and satisfied just like she was and um yeah she she would tell you that uh uh that that her my thoughts were not her thoughts in reverse she would tell you that and i'm okay with that i'm okay with that yeah because you won in the end <laughs> that's why i'm okay with that <laughs> now how long did it take for her to come around to realize you were the one 
Well, let's see. We started dating in, let's see, that was August. We started dating in September. And uh, yeah, so it took me took me a whole month. <laughs> Can you imagine? A whole month. And after that, we were inseparable. So, yeah. And uh, I don't know what I did. Yeah. I don't know what I did. If you asked me to to recreate it and do it again, I would fail. But <laughs> but it worked that whatever it was, it worked that time. And, and that's the only time I needed it to work. And I'm with you. I'm a firm believer of first sight. Uh, I was the same way, but we can go into that another time. The friend of yours that was going to ask her out, uh, do you know whatever happened to him? Did he ever marry someone as cool as Pandora? <laughs> well, he, he went on to date someone uh, that was a friend of Pandora's. And uh, he, uh, like I said, he was in ROTC. So he retired uh, a lieutenant colonel. And I don't know since then exactly, you know, what, uh, what he's been doing. I, I don't know if he got married or not. But uh, I do know that he did go um, after ROTC, went into the service, and he did retire as lieutenant colonel. So, uh, yeah. Um, but he was he was a good guy. He was a good guy. He just wasn't the right guy for Pandora. I was. <laughs> he just didn't know that. I like the way you were helping Pandora that early on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had to look out for it, right? Yep. All right. So, grandkids, uh, you have five. I have one. I know how much fun one is, so I know five's got to be a ton of fun. Uh, list the list them by in order of age. Give me first names. Okay, Jerry is eighteen, Nina is eleven, and then uh, Jaleel is nine, and Silas is seven, and Kamal is seven. And what do they call you? They call me Grandpa. All right. You good with that? I am grandpa. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I wanted. And there, there were all the other names. And I said, no, we're just going to go with something traditional, something simple. I want to be grandpa. Uh, my brother, I think he's papa or something. I don't know. But anyway, I just want to be grandpa. That's all I want to be. I just want to be grandpa. So, uh, yeah. I assume those are five of the most spoiled kids walking the planet. <laughs> um, I, I would say that they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, we, uh, we have a good time with them. Uh, two were over, of course, this weekend for uh, Mother's Day activities, and uh, uh, I have a, a garden. So, um, I and I also have an area where I, I have nothing but uh, berries, fruit and berries. So whenever they come over, they always want to go out there and pick. Now strawberries are are already now. So they're picking strawberries, and uh, the one grandson, Silas, I said, Silas, that was not ready yet. You've already picked. We've already picked all of them that are ready. And so then I have a lot of blueberries, and he loves blueberries. So uh, when they get ready, he's going to be all over my blueberries, which is fine with me because I would rather for them have something for them when they come over like that than, uh, than me eat them all. So it's it's good. It's good. I love it. I love it. Now you list here under hobbies that you are a container gardener. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? That means that I do not plant anything directly into the ground. Um, I have um, so raised beds, and that's where you build up. Uh, you, it, you, some people call them boxes, but you build up uh, above the soil level, and you actually put the soil that you want in it. Um, and then I have found that something called grow bags, some, uh, some people call them smart pots, but they are uh, actually cloth bags. And I have anything from five gallons to a hundred gallons. And that's what I, I plant, uh, tomatoes, watermelons, peppers, uh, everything, cantaloupes, uh, cucumbers, squash, everything goes uh, into those on my raised beds. So this year I am, uh, I'm going to try peanuts again. So Saturday I went out and got my raw peanuts from the nursery and now I've got them sprouting on the inside and probably in another week or so, I might be putting them uh, in one of my raised beds. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, nothing goes into the ground directly into the ground. Everything is in a container or a raised bed. Is that just the best way to grow something or just the way you want to do it? 
think it's, it's the way that I want to do it um, because, you know, I'm still living in the city and I can do a lot more this way than I could if I took uh, half my yard, backyard and, and plowed it up and all of that, you know. So uh, my parents always had a garden. My father was an agriculture teacher. You know, he had the 4-H, not the 4-H or the FFA guys where uh, he was the advisor for them. And they always had a garden with the tractor, you know, you plow and all that. But, you know, we lived in the country, so you could do that. But here in the, you know, in the city, you have uh, uh, limited space. And so it, uh, so this is the way I prefer to do it so that I can maximize what I'm able to do. What is on the list to grow that you have not planted yet? Um, I still have, uh, I, I, I try to grow everything from seed and not go to the nursery and buy plants. So I still have some tomatoes and some uh, uh, bell peppers and hot peppers that either I'm going to plant or I'm going to try to give away. Uh, because when when you go by seed, I seem to always grow too much. I've always given I've already given away some, um, and I think the the peanuts. I have some flowers I'm going to plant, but the um, Zinnias, but the peanuts are the last thing that I haven't done anything with yet. But then, you know, they are a uh, they're tropical plant anyway, so uh, if they need lots and lots of uh, hot weather. Well, but, if uh, you're looking, else is already in. If you're looking for somebody mm-hmm. to give the green peppers to, you just give me a call. I'll meet you somewhere for okay. those. Okay, <laughs> <clears throat> love peppers and onions, so cannot get enough of those. Okay. Uh, what is onions out there too, growing. Yeah. What is the best thing about being a photographer? Meeting people, new people, different people all the time. Every job you meet somebody different. Um, and then in real estate, you say, well, uh, how can you, um, I mean, how, how can you, I always, my saying is, uh, we, uh, new creation photography, where we make taking pictures of amazing people and things not only a wonderful, but a fun experience. And then the question is, well, how do you make taking pictures of houses a fun experience? A lot of these homes, people are still there. And it's even though homes are selling fast, it's still stressful to try to get your house ready for the market. And so uh, I go in and one of the things that, the, the, I think the biggest thing that I do other than take quality images is to put them at ease because they want to know, is this right? Is that right? What should I do? And and you could tell that there's some nervousness in them. And what I'll do is go in and and compliment them on the things that that they have done that that look good. And then I'll make a little suggestion. Well, you know, I think if we did this, it would make for a better image, a better picture. Okay, okay, okay. And, And then I'll compliment them again. And and so, you know, you have to be personable. You can't just come in, this is me, and just start snapping pictures. You have to be personable, put the people at ease, and you meet people. And um, uh, that's, that's, just how, that's just how it works, meeting people, meeting people. Now, your website is newcreationphotography.net, not .com. Yeah. Everybody needs to get it right, .net. We were talking before we came on. There's a funny story. If they go to .com, Madison, what will they find? Well, they will uh, see pictures. They will see uh, maternity pictures, baby pictures, but they will also see birth pictures, okay? (laughs) I don't do birth pictures. So uh, newcreationphotography.com was already taken uh, oh so many years ago when I first started. And uh, that that was okay. And I went out, and people would always confuse that in the beginning. And they would go out, and they would tell me what they saw. And I said, well, let me just go out here and see what I see. And I go, oh, okay. No, that's not me. That's not me. And I'm not in Iowa. So it's, it's all good. So make sure everybody knows it's newcreationphotography.net. No S on creation. Right. A lot of people make that mistake. New. No S on the end of creation. Creation is singular, but the photos yes. are plural. The talent is plural plus. Uh, Madison, we've enjoyed having you on the show. Good luck with everything. I know the market will continue to stay busy and glad little yes. league teams are getting back to playing. So you can, I know you enjoy shooting those shots too. 
Oh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, good luck with everything. We've enjoyed having you on the show, and we will see everybody next time on Triangle B&I. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.